Hello, uh, hello, <coughs> sorry. Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be reacting to one of the early uploads from the YouTube channel, The Game Theorists. I'm a huge fan of their work and I hope that you will enjoy this video as well. This video came out in the year 2015, so I think it's around 6 years ago. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of their work. I hope that you will enjoy this video as well. Let's start. War never changes. Oh look, shaving! Cool! <laughs> Hello Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! Hello. And to the conclusion of what I'm going to lovingly call our Apocalypse Trilogy. I mean, think about it. You had Mad Max, Fallout, and FNAF mm -hmm. 4. Yep, three games symbolizing the fall of rational humankind. Witness me, Battle of 83, excited beeping. First things first, just in case you've been living deep underground in a surprisingly clean, roomy, and self-sustaining bomb shelter for the past month and a half, as part of a series of games announced at this year's E3 conference, which left many a gamer weeping for joy, Bethesda grew my cold, scientific heart three sizes that day, probably through radiation more than love. Ugh, that's no good. That's really no good. That's really, really no good. When it announced Fallout 4 isn't only a real game, but that it'll be here before the end of the year. Now that is how you make an announcement. Take that, vague Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. But for one gamer out there, this wasn't just super exciting. It was the culmination of almost eight years of careful and diligent work. Sort of. In case you've never done yourself a favor and played the Fallout series before, the games take place in an alternate universe where, among other things, World War II never really ended, everyone is afraid of getting invaded by China, and in 2077, a nuclear war takes place which wipes out civilization as we know it. Humans that haven't mutated into deadly monsters or zombies live in small communities that dot the radioactive wasteland, and instead of printed money, people have taken to using discarded old bottle caps for currency. Knowing this, a little over a month ago, a clever Fallout superfan named Seth, who goes by Gator Machete Jr. on Imager so as not to get him confused with Gator Machete Sr., obviously, <laughs> sent his collection of bottle caps to Bethesda. A whopping 2,000... 240 caps, aka 11 pounds of bottle toppers, aka the remnants of an entire undergrad and master's degree worth of parties. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of production. Uh, that's sorry, blah, blah, blah. that's a lot of collection. Wow. All in the hopes of pre-ordering the game using the franchise's own currency. Shortly thereafter, employee Matt Grandstaff confirmed that Seth would indeed be receiving a copy of the game when it's released on <laughs> November number ten, unless they decide to pull a Scott Cawthon and release it like a week ago. Now, oh. other than being an extremely cute and encouraging story. You think I'm cute? Aww, get out of here! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> They're pretty so cute about how seriously Bethesda takes the dedication of their fan base, this got the wheels in my head turning a bit. Just how much are bottle caps from the Fallout universe worth in real world US dollars? And how many of those bottle caps would it take to actually reach the real world monetary value of a brand new copy of Fallout 4, aka $59.99 plus tax, with exclusive in-store pre-order bonuses like Dirty Brown Skin 1, Dirty Brown Skin 2, useless rifle that you'll feel compelled to keep since you got it as an exclusive pre-order in-store bonus and your own <laughs> you might want to kick me if, in case your pistol fails or your fist break real world pip boy <laughs> okay now that last one is actually pretty cool no! 
So saddle up, strap on your power armor, and grab your laser Tommy guns, because now I'm going to use my patented version of Mind Vats to walk you through exactly how we're going to figure this out. To understand the math behind bottle cap cash, you first have to understand how currencies work. When you think of money, you probably think of pill... pills. <laughs> okay. When you think of money, you probably think of bills and coins as having worth. But a bottle cap? It seems absurd, right? But really, it's not. That piece of paper you... Ridiculously true. ...hold in your hand is just as meaningless as a bottle cap. They're both useless objects. In fact, the bottle cap is probably more useful. Yeah, because it's metal, you know. The only difference, though, is that we've all agreed that the paper has some sort of... <laughs> doesn't break, uh, doesn't open locks, doesn't open all locks. You can just smash it. ...greater symbolic value, and that the bottle cap is just trash. I mean, did you know that just a few years ago, dealers were using Tide detergent as an acceptable payment for drugs? Seriously, laundry detergent. The stuff that gets your whites whiter and brights brighter was the go-to currency for your heroin fix. I'm sorry, what? What? Oh, wait, wait, how do we even know this fact? Brings new meaning to the term money laundering, am I right? <laughs> am I right? Alright. Or think about the classic example of cigarettes having value in prison. Currency is merely an agree- No, 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 no. No, right now it's more towards, uh, if I'm not wrong, in USA, right, it's more towards ramen, food. Yeah, which is quite unfortunate. But, well, ramen. Yeah. that some object, like a bottle cap or jug of Tide, or a set of objects, like a piece of paper and round chunks of metal, has value. Historically, these items were really just kind of an IOU. The bill that you held in your hand was backed by something. It represented some amount of a more valuable resource. Walk into the bank, hand over your money, and theoretically you could walk out with your rightful amount of that resource, most often gold and silver. Which, it's also worth pointing out, are two metals that again, are only valuable because we've all agreed they have value. Seriously, what are you really going to do with a big brick of gold? Bludgeon someone with it? Doorstop? Bicep curl? Today Hey, though, most money is what's known as fiat money. No, not the savings that you've put away for your fancy Italian car. It's money that's not backed by anything. In the Fallout games, this isn't a problem, because bottle caps are backed by another valuable resource, water. Water is the valuable resource in the post-apocalypse. Why bottle caps? Well, the reasoning behind bottle caps was that they're impossible to counterfeit. No bottle cap factories existed after the world ended. That also means that they're in limited supply, which preserves their value against inflation. A huge Correct. issue we discussed during our Economics of World of Warcraft episode. So what is the value of a bottle cap? Well, since we can't put a firm price on the value of water in the Fallout universe, we have to compare them to something that's generally considered to be a valuable resource across all of history, the aforementioned gold. In the Fallout New Vegas add-on Dead Money, you can collect 37 gold bars during the heist of the century's mission. Each one can be sold at an optimum value of 10,500 and 39 caps. This also tells us that wow. gold is a good standard to compare against because this is one of the highest valued items in the game, meaning that even in the post-apocalypse, gold is still something that people value. Now the carry weight of each of these bars is 35 pounds, so all we need to do to figure out the value of that gold is convert it to bottle caps and we have our amp- Wait, how do you know that it's pounds and it's not grams and it's not even um, tons? You never know, it's just it's like in-game, it's not real life. You know, different worlds maybe, different gravity, different law, law mechanics, you know. Sir. To begin, the value of gold is most often measured in ounces. But not ounces like Americans know them, where there are 16 per pound, rather troy ounces. A unit of mass specifically for gold and other precious metals and gemstones. A wow. troy ounce is actually heavier than the United States ounce, which isn't even its official name. Technically, US ounces are called avoirdupois ounces, but just saying... Ounces? That word makes me feel pretentious, so let's move on. Doing the conversion of 35 pound gold. Br so I'm pretty sure you guys you know that it's called a water pour. So blah 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 blah. 
brick is actually 510 troy ounces. But that's not all. We also have to consider how pure the gold is. Loyal theorists will remember when we calculated the cost of Minecraft diamond armor using the four C's of gemstones. One of those C's stood for carrot or weight of the diamond. Gold is also measured in carrots, but this time with a K, a word originating from the carob beans that old merchants used to use to weigh gold. Carob oh. with a C, not a K. And carrot with a K now measures gold purity, not weight like carrot with a C, despite it originally being inspired by a measure of weight. Y you know what? They really just f***ed the whole system up. So t <laughs> Those rich people mindset, you know. <laughs> what would the... Ah, uh, never mind. Those are history. 24 karat gold is pure gold. This can also be expressed by saying that it's 999 out of a thousand parts gold, which again isn't technically pure 100% since there's that one missing thousandth, but whatever, gold merchants are dumb. So in Fallout we see the gold bar being marked with 999.9, .9, telling us that this is a pure chunk of 24 karat gold. As such, Thankfully, we don't need to do any other funky calculations. So the price per gold in the Fallout universe is 10,539 caps divided by 510 troy ounces, or about 21 caps per troy ounce of pure 24 karat gold. Now to finally relate it to something we know, the price of gold in dollars. And I wanted to do that as accurately as possible, which meant pinning down the exact year the Fallout universe completely diverted from our own timeline, which according to developers is when culture essentially froze where it was. After reading as many interviews as I could find, the best I could conclude was that the split occurred sometime around the 1950s. But here on Game Theory, I'm not satisfied with just rough estimates. I had to get a little creative. Time to get creative. No! That's a tear of a lion! No! The only real connection I could find between Fallout's universe and our own reality, besides a few dialogue references and landmarks, was the music that plays on your in-game radio on the various stations you pick up on your Pip-Boy. So I organized all the real-world songs into a list, and after checking the original release dates of each recording, the most recent song on either of the game's soundtracks was a cover of the classic song Blue Moon by Frank Sinatra, which plays on radio- Oh no. New Vegas in Fallout New Vegas and places the timeline split a little later than I expected, squarely in 1961. 19, 1961. Wow. I was not born yet. I'm pretty sure a lot of our audience right now were not even born yet. Yeah. More specifically, January 3rd. January 3rd of 1961. Yeah, still not born yet. Still not born yet. So, armed with a date, some. Wait a minute, if you're born in 1961, that is like, what, 40, 60, 60 years? You're born in 60, when, if you're born on that age right now, on, right now you are literally called an elderly, because 60 years and above is called elderly. You're literally an old people. Gold and a fist. Old, old person, old person. Full of bottle caps, we can finally reach our conclusion. Yeah. In 1961, the cost of gold was about $35 per troy ounce. That would mean each bottle cap would be worth $1.67. Wow, that's surprisingly expensive, actually. Those are some valuable caps. In other words, Gator Machete Jr., by paying 2,240 caps, you technically overpaid by. $3,680.80. Hope you get plenty of play hours out of that one. In the words of an old timey person from 1961, You kid, you got a bum steer. But that's just talking about 1960s money. How about in today's economy? How does this all translate to $2015? Well, gold nowadays runs for the astronomical $1,095 per troy ounce. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a difference 50 years can make, right? And you can see where this is going. Gator Machete Jr., you got hosed at those prices each individual bottle cap would be worth $52. You practically could have bought the full Pip-Boy edition with two measly caps. But by handing over all 2,240 of the bottle caps in your collection, in the world of Fallout, you actually paid, get this, $116,480. No way. Hopefully Bethesda throws in some DLC for you, buddy. <laughs>
Hello. Hello. I don't break. Seriously. Is that saying? Hello. I don't break much. <laughs> For that price, you could have bought something useful, like a house. Or this picture of Mount Dogmore that I found. Etsy is a weird site. Now, I've done this enough times to know that some of you in the comments will complain about me using comparisons to in-game gold. Oh, it's fictional currency. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, fine. I don't have a complaint. Wait, I do. That was offensive. So let me run one last calculation. Finding out how much real world bottle caps are worth today mm. and figuring out how much Gator Machete actually paid. Well, here's how dedicated I am to you. I got in contact with Crown Holdings, the company who originally founded Crown Cap Enclosures. This is not our slogan. <laughs> the bottle caps you see featured in the games, and asked about the composition of bottle caps made by the company in 1961. A very <laughs> I'll see Monday. A helpful woman named Sheila informed me that at the time caps were made from 100% carbon steel. From more research, I found that a single steel bottle. Hey, are you posting a new FNAF cherry? <laughs> bottle cap weighs between 160 and 190 milligrams, or about 0 .005 pounds. To calculate out the current monetary value of a single bottle cap, I went to a website I absolutely love called Quandle, which is basically a search engine for numerical data, which yes, I recognize makes me sound incredibly nerdy, and check the current market price of steel, which as of June 11th, 2015 is about $100 per metric ton, or approximately 2,204 pounds. One metric ton is equal to 1 billion milligrams. So, just in case you're having trouble doing the math in your head, just divide that by the weight of one bottle cap, which averages out to be 175 milligrams, mm -hmm. and we can see that to get $100 worth of bottle caps, aka one metric ton of them, you'd need 5,714,285 caps. Divide that by the $100, and we can equate one US dollar to 57,142 caps. That is quite the collection, which makes a $60 pre-order for Fallout 4 worth $3,428,571 bottle caps. Our pal Seth and his big bag of real-world caps paid less than a tenth of a percent of what he would need for a straight trade. Seriously, he paid like four cents for the game. So good trade, Gator Machete Jr. I'm sure you've done Gator Machete Sr. proud. Oh, wow. Wow. I can't believe that. Wow. And hey, let's be honest, four cents for the game? It's a whole lot more than he would have gotten had he traded it into GameStop. Or if you wanted to hang on to all of your bottle caps, but we're still feeling a little rumbly in the tumbly, then consider a trial run of Nature Box. For my favorites like Chipotle Maple Almonds, Strawberry Lemonade Fruit Stars, and Mini Belgian Waffles, Mini Belgian waffles, they're so tiny and cute. Nature Box has over 100 snacks to choose from that get delivered straight to your doorstep. Radiation free, no less. And if you're a completionist, like. I shall do the main story, but look. But oh, look. <laughs> A side, for a side quest. Like I am, there's always more to try because they're constantly releasing brand new options every single month. Me wow, that's a lot. Meaning that your taste buds are never going to get bored. And right now, you can enjoy your first box of Nature Box snacks on them. But only at naturebox.com slash matpat, M-A-T-P-A-T. And only if you act fast. So save your hard-earned bottle caps and head on over to naturebox.com slash matpat right now to unbox a world of taste. They're Vault Boy approved. Isn't that right, Vault Boy? Vault Boy and I were talking about it the other day. He likes Parmesan garlic pop pops. One last time, that's naturebox.com com slash matpat for your first box of hand-picked snacks sent directly to your post-apocalyptic doorstep on them. And now to close us out, remember that's just a theory. Shut up and take my bottle cap. Oh, sorry, bottle caps. Sorry. Shut up and take my bottle caps. A game theory.
Thanks for watching. And by the way, want more Fallout action? Click here for my theory on the science of how you could survive a headshot as depicted in Fallout New Vegas. Or maybe you're in the mood for some other post-apocalyptic theorizing. Get a preview of the new Mad Max game and my theory on how to survive the car apocalypse and repopulate the world in your image by clicking right here. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got one final date with FNAF and this peanut butter nom nom. One final date. Oh gosh, 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 that's not a final date. I can, I can, I can say that. I can say that, right? Yeah, I can say that. Nom, 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 nom. All right, um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you do like this video, please consider to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have anything to share with us. The video that I just reacted to was a YouTube video from the YouTube channel The Game Terrorists. Their videos are amazing, do check them out. And yeah, thank you so much. Um, please show appreciation to their videos as well. And yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, remember that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. And please do subscribe, thank you.